Hi, and welcome to my video. I'm Pav, and today I'm going to be teaching you uh, what an annual training plan is, um, why you need one, and uh, how to go about setting it up. So first of all, your annual training plan is the same as uh, your macro cycle, if you've ever heard the term macro cycle, um, which is essentially uh, the period of time which might make up you know, around a year, um, but ultimately it's probably a little bit less because um, it, it'll be the point at which you finish your end of season break, off the time off the bike when you start training again to the uh, next, uh, the last A year goal of your, you know, your following year or season as we'll call it. So it might be around nine months, um, give or take, uh, around about there depending on you know, when you're starting and when you finished last year. So this uh, micro cycle is uh, then made up of uh, smaller blocks, which you may have heard of. You know, a block is a, a meso, meso, meso cycle, <laughs> meso cycle, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and uh, that typically might be three to four weeks, uh, where it might be built up of two weeks or three weeks of uh, build training or you know hard training, progressively challenging training, which is designed to stimulate your body, and then one week of recovery. Now, that's highly individual, and I don't think that blindly following a three or four week um, uh, meso, meso, meso cycle um, is, uh, is necessarily the, the best way to treat everybody. Um, certainly, probably not going to need less than a three, uh, three week um, cycle, but um, ultimately, if you're doing a very small amount of training uh, and it's uh, super simple, super easy, and you're recovering well, then there's no reason why you can't push that on a little bit more. Uh, definitely, definitely um, get help if you, if you don't know. Um, and if you're really new to cycling and you're not quite sure, um, you know what fatigue feels like especially when it's chronic and it's built up slowly i would speak to someone speak to someone who's a professional who can help you out because uh often the biggest mistake is that newer athletes tend to uh, continue to train and train and train and not factor in that recovery because they feel great um, but of course you feel great you're riding a bike <laughs> uh, but sometimes you know you do need to take uh, some time and ultimately you want to look at the long term uh, long term you know um, uh, picture the big picture um, because you don't want to have uh, any any issues around you needing to take time off the bike when you're really close to your event and uh, that's the reality with a lot of you know newbie cyclists um, especially those new to structured training uh, you, you sometimes accidentally overtrain, um, and then the only way to really combat that can be to take time off the bike or you know at best it might be extended recovery period um, and you know nobody wants to be riding around super super slowly and easy uh, when they've got a week to go <laughs> until their bigger event so some of the key points and you know benefits and reasons you should be working with an annual training panel or an ATP um, is first of all to understand exactly where you are in relation to um, you know where you need to be. So you should have set your goals um, by now, and you probably should have had a little look at you know what you can accurately commit to when you tie in those goals. So both of those are linked in with this blog or YouTube on my YouTube in the description if you need to need to go back and, and revisit those before. Um, and essentially, then if you've if you've researched your uh, events once you've got set your goals, then let's just use uh, a Grand Fondo as an example. Um, you should know that what the demands of that event are. So I'm gonna throw a few out, and they could be you know riding in a group, especially if it's a mass participation event of you know 10,000 people, uh, the actual base endurance to ride for six, seven or more hours, um, and then one more which could be to be able to eat on the bike. So you've got three solid demands there, but ultimately you could have loads. Now. Once you've got those, you should be able to, you know, objectively view yourself and work out which is the uh, which de which demands you need to focus on, which are your weaknesses, um, and that's what you typically will do during the uh, winter time, the furthest part away from your event, is work on those weaknesses. So, in our example, if you were only riding a bike for an hour and you need to ride for seven hours, you need to get cracking on building that base endurance. Um, but as you can see from looking at this, actually you're building a really good big picture of everything that you need to do and you should be pretty complete cyclist um, if you've managed to factor in all of the demands of your, of your event or your goal um, and you can uh, work towards them. So um, the, next, the next thing to look at would be 
uh, what things you're actually quite strong on. So let's just say that you've um, not got that base endurance, but you're actually pretty good technically. So you probably uh, don't need to work too much on riding in a group or you know eating on the bike, taking a sip from your drink on the bike. Um, they, they're not necessarily things you need to work at far away from your event, but there will be a point at which you want to strengthen those. Um, so if we flip that round and we just say that actually, you know, you've got a really good base endurance um, and you can ride your bike all day, but the, what you want to achieve is to be faster at your Grand Fondo. Maybe you're repeating this, you want to set a better time or you want to qualify for the uh, Grand Fondo World Championship, something like that. So actually your weakness might be your power, uh, especially recovering from repeated um, you know, powerful efforts up, you know, long climbs, for example. So what we would look at there is actually during the off season, the winter, the time furthest away from your event, maybe you are working more on your power. Um, and then there will become a point where you do need to switch to strengthen your strengths as well, because that's where, you know, the, you're, you're going to be able to make sure that you're reinforcing those. Um, so you don't want to be in a situation where you neglect your strengths. Um, you do need to bring it all together, but there'll be a, a timing point around that um, at some point as you get towards your events. And that's where these, you know, smaller blocks of training can be really beneficial because you're going to be able to assign a specific goal to each block as you get through that. You're going to be able to time everything perfectly. You're not going to leave any stone unturned. It's going to look really good and you're going to have a clear direction for each of your, for your next nine to 12 months. Another really key part of, you know, cycling training is your periodization. Now I touched on a, a bit of that before in, you know, this uh, block by block, um, but ultimately you might have a bigger, um, you know, methodology to factor into. And this principally for me could come down to the amount of time that you have a week. If you have 10 or less hours a week, um, give or take, you might not benefit from a, um, a polarized approach to your training where you just focus on mainly low intensity, long rides, and then high intensity intervals and miss out that middle bit. Um, because actually, you know, that low intensity, you need a bit more time. You need quite considerable amount of time. So you might be talking about 15 or more hours, especially maybe 10 or more hours, give or take the athlete um, to be able to make that work well. So if you have a limited amount of time, actually, you might be talking about doing more threshold work, um, which is, you know, sitting um, instead of doing pointless uh, low intensity stuff, you might actually do a bit more, you know, sweet spot uh, and around that kind of intensity, which is um, great, but gives good uh, adaptation in a smaller amount of time. Um, and that's basic periodization. That's just one idea around that. Um, but ultimately, what you can start to look at is periodizing other training around your uh, bike training. And that could be strength training, uh, looking at, you know, making sure that you're spending um, the, the best time uh, lifting heavy weights and then transitioning that into more, you know, explosive efforts, which could uh, ultimately build, boost your, uh, um, your, your power, power outputs if you time it right. Um, but possibly more importantly is actually timing um, and periodizing your nutrition. Uh, especially, you know, if you are gonna do a typical base period, which is actually a lot of low intensity stuff, maybe, nothing really in the threshold area um, but obviously it may be having some intervals in there to either maintain or to build that if you're if you're including that in there um, actually periodizing your nutrition might be a, a real benefit especially again if you're looking to lose weight and you are doing a uh, a, a, a exclusively low intensity block of training, um, which is going to be burning fat as, a, as the fuel, then eating a, a lower carbohydrate diet might help that process. So that's a really good example of how you could bring your nutrition, your strength training, everything around and, and periodize that. And you can only really do that when you know what's going on with your training uh, for a long period of time. It can't really be sporadic. So I mentioned, uh, I mentioned one really important factor there, and that is you know, removing the chance of sporadic training. And um, that's a, typically something that most athletes who don't have a training plan will do. They just go out and they ride a ride that they want to do. They meet their friends. They maybe do some, a few efforts here and there, um, but it's completely un unstructured and it's really sporadic. And that will only take you so far. So if you've got a goal that you need to you know, commit to and go for, um, then having an ATP is actually going to make sure that you stick to that. You're going to have every block's going to have a goal and you're going to know a direction for each, uh, each session even. Um, so avoiding that sporadic training is, uh, is going to be really a, a great benefit of having a, a solid ATP. You're also going to find that actually it's going to remove the bias around your training. And now for me, this is a big one, a big reason why I always uh, work with a coach when I'm doing something um, 
uh, you know, big enough that I need a coach for. Um, and that is that actually what I tend to do is I just tie, I do the routes that I like to ride. So I'll go outside and I ride like a normal two hour loop and I might always just push a certain intensity um, because I enjoy that. Um, and there is obviously a balance between enjoying the, um, enjoying the training and getting enough from it. Um, and it depends on your expectations around that. I mean, my clients always tell me that they enjoy the training um, I, and I, I try to make it as fun as possible, but ultimately you still need to have that end goal in sight. Um, so there is a definite balance, uh, balancing act to be had between doing enough of the right work, but also enjoying the journey. Ultimately, you don't want to get to your A events, you know, um, feeling you know, glum about your training, you know, feeling like it's a chore. You want to have really enjoyed that journey um, because you're less likely to, you know, put the bike in the, the shed or in the garage and not get on it until you set your next goal, which is um, by that time you could be months away uh, of months of inactivity and you've had total or near total reversibility um, from all the hard work that you've done. So, you know, how you go about setting um, up an ATP, it really does depend on, you know, what platform you're using. Um, if you're using something like Training Peaks, they have an ATP in there. I think you had to be premium, not too sure on that. Um, and uh, or you could just use like a going old school with a, a spreadsheet. And I'm sure there's other, other software out there that will help you out do that. I mean, ultimately, you just need to be able to visualize and see everything that's going on. Even if you do hand write it out, you know, you might have dates or you might have a calendar with all the weeks on there. And then you just work out exactly what that training might look like for that block and in that week. And, and then you can start to time stuff like holidays. Um, you know, that is the biggest problem with the modern day amateur who has kids and a family. You know, if you have a your A event is the end of the, you know, the school summer holidays. The, the chances of you being a bit like uh, of you not going on holiday or vacation before that are pretty slim unless you're not taking the family away on vacation and that's fine if you don't but ultimately most people do tend to have that time uh, and if you can't ride your bike or you're only going to be able to do a little bit um, you know having that foresight to see that might actually mean that you know you could do a really big block of training leading into that and then take the week off if you had to take the week off and i think that that is that big all-encompassing um solution to the modern day amateur athletes challenges um so i definitely definitely like uh, you know building it like that the number one for me is obviously your goal setting and then researching the demands of your event and being objective about um, what you need to do. Uh, once you've got that, it's really easy to start to understand what you need to do in terms of training. Uh, and if you're confused at all, you know, definitely consult with a coach. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap this video up by literally saying that, you know, 15 minute consultations are always free with me. Um, so feel free to fill out the form on my website or send me an email and, uh, and we can have a little chat. No obligation to work with me going forward. It has to be a right fit. And if it's not the right fit for you, you need something more affordable. I have a load of coaches who I've worked with for many years who would uh, love to, to work with you too. So I know I can recommend someone. So thank you for, for tuning in. Always appreciate it. Um, as I say, make sure you, you uh, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends uh, if you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you. I'm Pav and have an awesome day.